In my recent top seven apps video, I mentioned that I'm trying out Notion to see if it's a tool that I wanna use long-term. And so in today's video, I'm giving you a behind the scenes look at how I set up my Notion and how I'm thinking about it currently, right? It's early days yet, but in case you were considering using it yourself and you're not sure, here is how I'm using it for potential teaching things, but also other types of projects as well. So first things first, I'm using the free version, but you will need the $4 per month one if you want to use this with all of your students, because um, the free version only allows five guests. So you sign in like usual, put in a password, and you get a code, and you put in your name, a photo, you know, whatever the case may be, to sign up for Notion. The password does have to be pretty long, so keep that in mind. It has to be at least 10 characters with special characters or I think 15 characters if there's no special characters. So in my case, I'm using for myself, not with a team, because I don't want to do a free trial for what something that has to be paid later on. So for myself, take me to Notion. And so here we are, and it comes with some templates already built in on the left here, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you starting from scratch and then using the templates a bit later on. Okay, so I created a basic page here to give you a sense of the different types of tools, the different types of elements you could add to one. Uh, so to begin at the very top, we have a cover, a uh, very simple when you kind of scroll before the title, it brings up add icon, add comment, and add a uh, cover. So in this case, there's already one here. You can change it and it comes with a lot of ones built in, which is what I used, or you can add your own as well. You can look at unsplash, whatever the case may be. And then what you could also do is once you choose a picture, maybe it needs to be repositioned. You can do that as well by dragging and moving it however you'd like. And then just say save position. You can also add an icon in case you want to separate kind of like here, the icons. And so you click on here. And what is it that this page is about? In my case, it's about writing. So maybe I add, you know, that hand with the pen. Okay, so that's an element as well. So that pops up on the side, making it easy to see. So then I just have the title of the page is pre-unit, right? So thinking like the first couple of weeks, maybe before we get into unit one of the semester. And then the way this works is you're basically adding in blocks throughout the whole page. So this first block is actually a table of contents block because what I did was I have here, week one is a heading and as is later on week two. So in my, when I said make a table of content for me, it automatically curated week one and week two because those are headings. So I didn't actually have to build the, the table of content, it did it for me. And so if I click week two, it will scroll down the page to that week. So that's one tool. Uh, here is the table of content. And I'll show you how to add them in a second, but just kind of showing you first. So again, I have the heading one, and you can click here to open up the menu and maybe you wanna color it, right? So I use purple ink here. You can maybe say, I want the word to be green, right? You can click in here and say, I wanna color the background. So it's easy to see as well. I'm gonna color it yellow. And so there you have that. So maybe it, you don't want it to be a heading. So you can say, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it into regular text. I'm gonna turn it into heading two or heading three, right? So you have these options here of some basic elements that you can choose from. And then keep scrolling down and I added, as you can see here, a to-do list, right? A checklist. So I've already marked this one off. You can unmark it again, okay? So in my checklist, the first thing I did was add just the text. So syllabus, course schedule, lecture one, et cetera. But then afterward, you can also add a block that are different links. So in this case, I added a PDF, right? In scrolling down, lecture one, maybe you have a video. So I added a video, right? So you can embed throughout. I embedded a website for the homework activity. So this is a way that obviously the free version, you can't share it with all of your students because it's limited. If you get, I think, the $4 a month one, then you can share it with quite a few people. But in this case, I'm doing the free version. So this is more just for me. You know, if I want to build courses, then I can do that. And I can have one area where I see, you know, what's going on. And then I can transfer what's needed to the LMS, you know, as well, right? So it's kind of doubling up here. Potentially, you don't want to use it in this way. Or you want to pay for it so that you can use it as a more customizable LMS system. Obviously, it's up to you to decide how you want to do that. 
Because in that case, you can share it with others or publish it to the web so that your students can see it. So going down, as I said, you embed various things. Um, this is a quote text. That's why it has a line here. So there's some ways of emphasizing certain uh, text on the page. Here, you can emphasize it as well with a call out. Okay? Various text. There's a divider in case you want to divide you know, one block from another one. Um, if you want to say, oh, I want to go back to the main page, here I'm going to embed a link back to 1101. And then, you know, bullet point list. So these are some of the basic ones that you would usually use when building a page, you know, that's helpful for you for different tasks or for creating a lesson. But now to show you, so let's click enter here, and I'm still in list form. So let's backspace here. So it goes back to the first line. And so what you can do, Automatically, you can just make this a new line of text if you want to do it that way, right? But if not, if, as you see here, you type the backslash and all the commands are up here. So now you can say, okay, what do you want to add? I want to add a text. I want to add a sub page. I want to add a to do list. I want to add heading, right? So you can go here and see the main ones. A lot of these I've, I've already shown you. Or you can also keep going and you can add maybe a date or a reminder for a deadline, or you might be teaching math, so adding in an equation. The databases are more complicated, so I haven't done a lot of perusal of this yet. I'll show you one example, uh, but I haven't you know, deep dive into this. This is more complex activities. So maybe in the future, if you're interested, I can do some research and show you how to create these. Let me know in the comments if you want that. But there are plenty of, you know, more complex elements here that you can check out. But then down here, the media is what's really helpful, right? Because you can embed an image, like an infographic. You can uh, embed a link to a website if you have supplementary reading. You can embed videos like I did above, an audio. Okay, You can add code if you're someone who writes code. Or you can upload or embed a file. In my case, I use this embed feature to embed the PDF above. You can also connect to Google Drive, right? And then there's also other options here in case you use these tools. I don't, so, you know, keep on going. Loom I do use, so you can do that pretty easily. And then as I mentioned, for the advanced blocks, the table of content, right? So when I click that, it made week one and week two for me because of the headings, okay? Um, if I had more headings, you know, heading one, heading two, heading three, that would be built in as well. And so you can kind of see here what potentially appeals to you. And again, the simple ones are down at the bottom as well. All right, so that's basically how you add in blocks on a page. You can decide, okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to add a heading to. Okay, and then here is, you know, week one self-assessment. And then as you, if you need to, you can go ahead and click and you drag it wherever you need. So it's underneath week one before we head into week two. Oh, underneath. So now there it is. As you see here, the table content, it's added the subheading because that is automatic with this. So I do think it's a great tool to use, the, book, the table of content, if you're using a lot of headings and subheadings. Something to keep in mind is you can click and then drag it to the side. And as you see the little blue line here, it will make a second column, right? Um, but I've had a bit of issues kind of going back and forth between columns. Maybe you'd have better luck, but it is an option here that I wanted to point out. And if you don't want it there anymore, you can go ahead and go back to the bottom here, right? Um, or whatever it is it was, in case you don't like that, you can do it next to here. So now you have two columns here. There is a lot of customization that's possible with Notion, which is something I'm liking. And again, you know, if you're just going to use a free version, it's great for building things as far as your teaching goes. Or even, you know, if you're an academic in higher ed, maybe you're working on a dissertation, you can go ahead and have a page for your projects, right? Your writing projects. So in this case, this isn't actually a database. It, it's what it's called here. And so to kind of show you, one thing that's cool is you can go ahead and add a page. And then you can look at the templates, 
right? So you can just do it from scratch. You can add a database or you can say, I want to see what has already been created. And in that case, under education, there's tons of options here. So they already have a ready built template for a syllabus. So you can just say, use this template and then just edit obviously the information that's already built in here. Maybe you want to take notes on your readings. And so you want to use the Cornell system. It already has a built in template for you. And so you can really go through and see what ones you might want to use. Do you like this lesson plan one? And it's not just education. There's personal ones as well in case you want to habit track or you're applying for jobs and you want to track her here. So I do recommend looking at the templates as well to see what might appeal. And again, you make a new page and you click templates. That's how you find those. So that's an option as well. But the databases, as I said, there are more complex ones. And so one you might find that you like is the table. And so that's what my dissertation progress tracker is here. I just said I want a table. And I said, okay, this first one is text and there are my five chapters. The next one is tags and I created these tags. And to do that, it's very simple. You literally just say, you know, maybe your editing stage and you say create editing. Okay, and you can delete as you need to, right? So tagging. The due dates for what you're working on, you can attach Google Docs, right? So you can go straight to the chapter doc that you're working on. And you can just keep going here, adding more and more to your table. And so there's this element here that you say, okay, other than default view, I also want to have a gallery view. And now each chapter has its own page. You click and you go to it and you have the information that was in the table. But you can also go ahead and start making a page specifically about chapter one. And it's all interconnected. Or maybe you want to say, okay, I want to see at a new view and I want to see where things are on the calendar, where my due dates are. So you can click calendar and say create. And now it's made the calendar view for you. And you see, you know, the deadline I curated, chapter one is due then. You might say, okay, I want to see the properties, what appears in the calendar. I want to see the due dates, right? Because that may be the exact time. I want to see the Google Doc that's linked to it so it's easy to find. I want to see my tags, but not the Google Doc, right? And so you can kind of filter here the properties that appear in the calendar view. Like, you know what? The calendar view isn't to my liking. Let me go ahead and delete that one, right? And go ahead and delete and you remove it and it's gone. Okay, so there are quite a few options here. There's a timeline one. If you wanna do like a Kanban board, there's that option there. Um, but in my case, I kept it simple with the table for now, as that's the one that I liked the look of the most. So there is a lot of interconnection here. It's definitely a system that takes a while to learn. I can see that I'll need to spend some time researching it. But I just wanna show you, other than teaching, you can use it for your projects as well, um, your writing projects, etc. Now something to also show you, so in my case I'm not going to use it so much for my teaching because I, I'm just going to use my LMS to keep it simple and I, ha I like my system currently, but I do so see myself using it for my writing. And so I, I obviously I pointed out the dissertation one, potentially you have creative projects or things around the house you want to do, and so it can be great for organizing all of your information about that project. So in my case, I'm currently working on drafting various picture book manuscripts in prep for querying. And so in this case, when I made the main page, I used the gallery database for this. Okay? That's why it looks like this, because I chose specifically to create a gallery. And so in my case, I currently have um, six drafts that are far enough along that I want to have pages for each of them. And here we go, right? So I have the six here. And again, it's easy to click and drag in case I want to reorganize the order of them. Um, I can choose how I want it to look, right? Uh, and then if you click on it, it takes you to a specific page tied to this particular element of the gallery. So I can open it as a page and now I can start building information on here. So I this image is there because I want it to appear on my gallery. Right. Um, so that's why I have that image at the beginning for the purpose of aesthetics on the front page. But then from here, again, I can say, OK, backslash. And then I can type in to say, OK, I know that I want to add um, potentially an image that is going to be kind of like a mood board for my book. OK, well, then I can add an image or my OK. Well, the first thing I want to have is a heading so I can say head and it's going to be heading one and whatever it is that I want to title with. So maybe 
drafts, right? And I click enter. And then now I'm going to embed the Google Doc of every draft that I have in here, right? So maybe I want to say, you know, version one, right? And, you know, here I am. I can highlight it. And I say link and I add a link to it, right? And so that's one option for that. I don't want it to be text. I want it to be a bullet list, right? To make it easier to see, right? So I can just kind of build now this page based off of whatever information I feel should be there. All different versions of my drafts, versions of the query letters I'm sending, maybe a table of all the agents I've submitted my queries to. I can really build one page with all the pertinent information for the particular uh, story in question. So it can be a bit easier than what I'm currently doing, which is having like a Google Drive folder and all these subfolders. This can be all on one page, all the information that I need. So I see it more of my creative stuff rather than my teaching stuff, but it is an option for teaching um, if you like that digital style of building lessons, building ideas for your class. But I highly recommend looking at the templates and seeing, you know, how can you just edit things versus building from scratch um, to get started. And then as you learn, then you can start building from scratch as well. If you use Notion, let me know your top tip in the comments below. And again, click like and subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any future content.